got a tele -ho. Now we're gonna see how the XPS performs with a bit of undervolting. I'm gonna talk about gaming later, but I'm gonna concentrate on like all core bursts and actually see how much faster it is video editing, like actually rendering the scene. It actually gets better with this i9. It's actually really phenomenal. It's just blown away every laptop I've used in terms of Cinebench and um, even Geekbench, like the scores are off the charts. So I'll put them up here. Now those scores are not undervolted, but we're gonna undervolt it now, see how much faster we can render. It already is the fastest laptop at rendering, but it does get better. I'll talk about gaming later. You just type in extreme utility, blah, 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 blah whatever, close enough. <laughs> uh, might wanna put Intel in front of that. Uh, Intel, yes, that's the one. Tuning utility, all right. Now I'm on my desktop at the moment, so yeah. I'm just doing that because I've got screen capture software on this. And you just download it, install it. The same on a laptop. It shouldn't take long. It will ask you to actually restart. Restart? Okay, I'll be back soon. All right, we have restarted and let's open Extreme Tuner. Do this, get your own risk and all this stuff. That's up to you if you want to do it. Do not want to participate in this. All right, so what you do, oh, see, it's going to give you this warning. So make sure you read it and you're fully aware of what you're doing. So all we do is we go to core voltage offset. Now on the XPS 15, this will actually be on the left because this is the biggest screen, I guess, I don't know, whatever. But this core voltage offset is on the left and you just set how much millivolt you want out. I would say start at 100 and creep up from there. I have the i9, so the i9s will be the best because they're the cream in the crop. So I think that the i9 will be able to undervolt the most. And on this XPS 15, I can get 130 millivolts and that's stable. If I go any more, it'll crash. 130 is 100% stable there. It'll differ for each one. The i7s might not go as well, but then again, you could get lucky. You might be able to do 150. I've heard of that before. Then you just go apply and then you can save the profile too if you want. But that's it. That's all you have to do to undervolt. So let's see the result. Okay, now let's have a look at the thermals. Now, the benchmark has been running for long enough that, um, how long has it been running? six minutes okay long enough to just tell me that these temperatures will be stable i'm going to leave it on for longer and i will tell you if anything changes but generally it's going to stick here and it's going to be stable now don't be fooled that says it throttled okay if you have a look here see that massive spike at the start that's when i turned the benchmark on and as soon as the fans kicked in those temperatures went right down so that ignore that throttling that's just see there the spike the same spike right there before the fans kicked in. Once the fans kicked in, it has not throttled at all. We're talking three gigahertz, all core boost, so that's fantastic. So it's over the 2.9 gigahertz, which is its base speed. So if it's over 2.9, it is not throttling, and this is not throttling at all. Okay, thermal throttling, log, log. No, it's not throttling. Uh, this is CPU only test. That's just when the fans kick in, you get that little spike there. Where's the spike here? Spike, see the spike where it throttles. That's just until the fans kick in. Once the fans kick in, it will not throttle at all. So it doesn't throttle. This is another CPU test, 100% CPU usage, as you can see there. We're pulling 55, 56 watts, pretty much its power limit. So um, yeah, it's really pushing it here. So we are going at 3.4. Um, you can hear the fans there, they keep on going up and down. So the fans aren't on max speed, but as you can see there, the package temperature we're getting is around, you know, mid eighties, low mid eighties, 81, whatever, up to 85. So it's not throttling, but have a look here. We are running at 3.45 gigahertz. And yesterday it was running at three gigahertz doing the same test. And that's because I've actually undervolted it. So, I've used a minus 150 millivolts there, an offset, and you can just do that. You use the Intel Extreme Utility. You just go in here and you change the voltage core offset, and I've changed it to minus 150 millivolts, which is a big undervolt, actually. It's um, surprising it's very stable. Look, it's been going for 12 minutes now. It is stable at that, so be careful. You don't want to <laughs> take away too much millivolts there. Try it at 100 first if you're willing to do this, if you want to do this. But the difference is big. You know, going from 3 gigahertz to 3.5 nearly, 3.45, 
that's a big difference, especially if you're doing a long render. So undervolting makes a huge difference here. You're able to go at a lot higher clock speed for longer. And yeah, it's not overheating. You can probably hear the fans there. 83, 85 degrees, as I said. Um, yeah, very interesting that you can get that extra performance from undervolting. And we'll test that in gaming as well. Okay, let's get in here. So this is undervolted by uh, 130 millivolts. Now we'll see if it renders faster. Now people have asked me screen record when I do this. I'm not going to screen record while I'm benchmarking. That makes no sense. Anyway, what you can see here is look at the frequency. It's a lot higher with this undervolt of 130 millivolts. See, when I was rendering before, it would be around 3 to 3.3 gigahertz. Now we're getting up to 3.6 and sometimes beyond 3.6. So there's a significant improvement there just from that undervolt. We'll see what difference it makes in the time here. And temperature, where are we? Temp, 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 temp. Oh, here we go, 97 package temperature. So this is at its limits now, um, 3.5. That's still way ahead of what it was uh, stock, which was 3.5. 0 to 3.3 max and really it was sitting more like 3.1 around there so a big significant increase in the um, gigahertz there in the frequency so we'll see how much faster it renders so we have to beat nine minutes and nine seconds i think it is and i think we're going to beat that easily using a gpu as well so remember that we're still getting high frequencies with the gpu and oh stop 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 I missed out on a few seconds, right? three seconds, I'll oh, stop. All right, so <laughs> that was probably below eight seconds. I'll have to have a look at the video. Eight seconds, eight minutes, sorry. So we shaved another minute off with that undervolt there, one minute. So this is on another planet now compared to any other laptop in terms of video editing, rendering. This i9 really does make a difference in that regard. We were using the GPU as well, the uh, Ultra HD graphics on the Intel, as well as the NVIDIA GPU. So it was putting on some heat into that um, heat spread there that shared between the GPU and CPU. So, and it was still going over three gigahertz during the whole render. So we're talking up to 3.5, 3.6, sometimes 3.3. So that is amazing, quite amazing how fast this renders. Shaved off another minute. So it's like nearly, you know, it's not 10%, but still, still, when you consider that the arrow does it in over 10 minutes, I think it's 11 minutes or something, I don't know. I'll put a graphic up here, but um, that is amazing. Wow, what speed. So as you can see there, undervolting is well worth it. Not only that, it actually saves you battery as well. So it's well worth doing. Just find a sweet spot where it's super stable. You're going to get faster renders going to get better battery life better gaming and on gaming actually here you can see i've actually underclocked the gpu the gpu um, frequency can go up and down but i've underclocked it by about 200 megahertz and i've undervolted by the 130 volts and what i can say is this i9 wants to boost all the time so any time that it gets in a like temperature range where it can start boosting again it's going to boost so even though you undervolt it, that means the temperatures come down and then it just wants to boost again. So it'll get hot and throttle. Now it doesn't throttle as much. It takes longer to throttle. And even though I've reduced the frequency of the GPU as well, so keeping it cooler, then the CPU just wants to spike up again because this i9 just goes off its chop. So it just wants to boost all the time. So it might be different with the i7, but... So the benchmarks were a little bit faster within the margin of error still, but undervolting is well worth it. So I think you should do it. And I'd actually like to know how to cap the frequency to 3 gigahertz. So if anyone knows, let me know. Undervolting well worth it. And in the next one, I'll catch you. Ciao.